sér krummi ef þestjel Ett neg bende gokken vel Flöj úr fjalla gjóðu Flöj úr fjalla gjóðu for something completely different. Yes, All right. different. All right. <laughs> That's uh, a big shield. Yes, if you if you see those two together, you will see actually the dimensions of the shield. It's huge. Um, so you can see the backside of the, of the shield. We will start with that. Uh, also, as it's uh, quite something something uh, different compared to color mm -hmm. uh, the right side will uh, the back side will be brown again a variation of brown tones but here we will have the chance to actually uh, introduce color on a large surface mm -hmm. um, I want the shield to be um, in a light blue with a black freehand on that mm -hmm. um, as I I think the wood would be quite thickly painted with a with a thicker coat of uh, color. I will also um, try to do that with the first layer of, of the base color mm -hmm. that will be blue, and I will um, then pick out um, parts where the paint actually chipped off. But I will paint that on with brown paint afterwards. Okay. All right. So. Um, a color that a lot a lot of people have been waiting for. There's dark sea blue on my palette. Okay. And I will mix the dark sea blue with a bit of the um, of the um, green that we've used also for for her eyes and the rope. Um, it's the um, cabalite green and white. And you'll need a lot of that, right? Yes. That circle is quite big. You switch back to your 3-0? Uh, no, no, sorry, not 3-0. Your 3, <laughs> size 3. Yeah, 3-0 would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would take maybe a day or two. <laughs> but... So, I need some more of that cabalite green. Um, it's more a, um, a pale turquoise blue. It's not really a uh, sky blue on the mm -hmm. palette at the moment. Um, I think I might add a bit of turquoise to the palette. So I want that blue to be just, just right because it's a huge surface. So you make sure. Yeah. So we will take the figure and check if the color works good. It's, uh, it's not sky blue as you said, but it works with the, with the green. Yeah, and also with the palette, of the, 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 the flash palette, I think it works. So it has a little bit of artistic freedom in this color right now. Yeah, sure. And I mean, the reason why it's a little green is because she's uh, standing in front of um, a big tree and that's reflecting the green a little bit. So there you have that. All right. So oh. that's fun, huh? It's like miniature painting. Wow. Yeah, actually, it's pretty. It's, uh, I would say it's even pretty close to. Yeah, it's not a sky blue, but it works well. Okay. Um, 
next step was? No, okay. next step will be uh, to already paint in the um, the underlying wood with uh, ah. because in that way when we use the wash afterwards we will uh, just mine those two uh, things a bit too close together plus mm -hmm. we will have the grain in on both on the same level. That makes sense actually. Yay! Wow. So you can see on the back of the palette I have some uh, mud brown from Model Air. But let me switch to the small brush again. Smaller. That's the one again? Yeah. So, mud brown and black. Mud brown and black was also the combination that I've used for the X. We will use it with a bit more mud brown um, because well, once we apply the wash, it will darken the whole thing down mm -hmm. a bit, anyways. Okay, so. Um, what, what's the direction on the shield uh, on her? Uh, it will be straight like that. Oh, okay. So you can see that with the foundation, we still have the black and white here in the middle, and that actually shows just the way how it's mm. positioned on the model. And you actually had to uh, base coat it twice because you first had the wrong direction? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> nice that you mentioned it. <laughs> no, I was saying it again. Um, so, first thing we will. Uh, Paint the the big cuts in there in brown. Also in those holes because. Uh, if you would have the paint um, covering the wood and it's just painted one time, um, the, all those cuts and indentations, um, you would see actually wood in there. Yeah. And the nice thing is you really don't have to think about it. Uh, it's kind of like a little bit paint by numbers, isn't it? Yeah. It's not wood, it's brown. Okay. And the next step we will um actually paint the the chips in the wood. So we focus around the area here. Mm, I'm adding a little bit more white to make it a bit more opaque, so I don't have any blue color shining through. You know, I have a stupid question, maybe, but yeah. um, I mean, the the, um, the pattern we've chosen for the shield is uh, something that's uh, very simple uh, overall. It's mostly all straight lines, and uh, I heard there's this uh, TV series that they have based on the miniature, um, <laughs> and in that series, they're, they're using a very um, cool sign, a uh, cool shield. But um, why don't you put that on first, the, the black stripes? Because uh, these will also cover some of these wood areas and you're going to cover them later. Yeah, but um, actually those are, compared to, to the size of the shield, those are actually rather small uh, or thin. Mm. And uh, I want them to be uh, like a second paint, paint layer. Ah. Um, so that you see also blue shining under under uh, underneath there showing underneath mm -hmm. so i think that's why i'm also just dotting in some brown on the edges of the wood yeah i mean that's where it naturally would come up first yeah And uh, if you now ever have to 
paint a barn or a shack or a wooden door, kind of the same thing. Yeah. Maybe even smaller. Yeah. <laughs> Because really the, the size here is uh, something that we don't have often in a miniature painting uh, unless you paint a tank or something. Yeah. Yeah, in the beginning we were actually a little shocked about the, the shield um, and then it uh, just turned cooler and cooler. <laughs> Maybe one uh, while you're doing this uh, this uh, little uh, battle damage and weathering stuff, um, the shield uh, we actually had to kind of straighten this a little bit. I mean, it's a big part, uh, and it actually kind of uh, warp um, sometimes, or even even uh, during transport, it could possibly warp. Um, and uh, we um, you applied some pressure on the middle part, on that uh, on that metal part, and kind of pushed it flat on the table. And then used a, a hair dry, a dryer to kind of uh, very carefully make it uh, warm and softer yeah. to straighten it out. Yeah, we didn't put it into boiling water as it's quite thin in the middle. Yeah. Uh, I thought that would be maybe a bit too much. Yeah. And since we only have one, <laughs> we didn't want to kind of uh, create a bubbly, boily shield. And you can already see that it's even without any highlights, uh, this already looks pretty cool. Also, this just one layer of blue helps a lot, um, as it's um, not completely even everywhere. Yeah, uh, with the black and white foundation shining through, it gives quite a nice natural look. And once we apply the, the wash, it will be even stronger. Okay, yeah, you have to make sure uh, that they that you don't have a pattern and that it, the, the places you pick look somewhat realistic and match the, the grain also a bit. So you have some stronger lines in here, pick some of them out and uh, just work around the edges. Also really, um, the deeper the cuts here in the wood are, the uh, stronger the paint should be flickered off to the side. Mm -hmm. And you can see I didn't do a lot of the shipping just in the very edge. Um, one reason for that is because it will be a lot darker after the after I washed it down, kind of to get a nice atmospheric shadow on there. Um, plus, we wouldn't have any strong ships in here because it's a little bit protected by mm -hmm. the metal frame of the shield. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, But no washes. Washes. <laughs> Um, we would do that with the strong tone wash, and after that, it's a lot of highlight work um, because we have to draw in the highlights more manually. Mm -hmm. Are you afraid that that strong wash is going to turn um, tone down the uh, blue too much? Uh, not really. Okay. Um, Just add a bit, tiny bit of turquoise on the wash. Let's see what that does. And with a clean brush, I just should switch to the bigger brush again. And we try to hold it like that so it does not pull. Oops. So it does not pull other than we want it to. The shield on the miniature is um, very, very upright. So there's no big angle or anything involved. And that means that you probably have the lower side of the shield darker and just have a general uh, light um, transition in there. And probably also a little bit to the outside, right? Yeah. Um, I think to the outside, it's more uh, something that we do for 
uh, artistic reasons yeah. and indicates a bit of a weathering or something like that. Um, but it's not due to the actual life situation. Yeah. That's just the key right now. Yeah. Okay, we'll let that dry. If it dries out a little bit cloudy, it's okay because that will give the shield a overall more weathered look. I think I want to increase the contrast a little bit more, but this time I'll go um, um, piece by piece. Okay. So um, I have a little bit more control and also I have a little bit variation on the... Uh, the uh, overall light situation on the shield is going to stay like that? Um, yes, but it will look a bit different bit when we add the highlights. Ah, okay. And when you're watching this, um, pay attention to the direction of the brush strokes. Like, w when does he apply water? Um, which direction does the brush go when he does, and so on. Okay. So I'm placing the strong bone. Cleaning the brush. And you can see I pull the pigments towards the shadow. Okay, now here it's just clean water in the brush. And back here to the side we will again. It's not that strong tone. Clean the brush and pull it from the lighter middle part here to the shadow on that side. Yeah. I know you get a little variation, like a little, almost like a little moistness or something. Yeah. Uh, once it's right, it will be more like a light difference. Mm -hmm. uh, now it looks a bit more humid. Let me dry that. Also, that is, uh, is that not really shadow. It's more, um, more something that. Uh, Again, for artistic is. Reason artistic or um, or also weathering based. Mm. It's always a good excuse to say, okay, no, no, it's, it's not a shadow, it's weathering. Yeah, it's discoloration caused by uh, moisture that comes in through the metal on the sides. <laughs> and if that's not the reason, then it's magic. Yeah. Okay, and here on this side, we will also uh, force the shadow a bit more because it's just underneath that metal application. Um, when hammering this piece, uh, make sure it's not too hot. Uh, if you can set your uh, yeah <laughs> dryer to to low, do it. Um, uh, lowest meaning is the temperature. Yeah. Uh, hold it farther away if you can't, um, and maybe give it a break in between if it's uh, if it's just too too hot. Yeah, I was about to say that um, I can um, here decide with that blow dryer. You can actually decide to just have cool air or uh, somewhat cool air. So I did that mostly because I want that uh, the heat to bend the shield again. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the next step will be quite. Uh, time enduring because uh, we have to paint all the little highlights I mean it already looks quite nice on cam but uh, if you compare it uh, with the model um, it still needs to be more 3d from the overall contrast mm -hmm. but you can see the colors harmonize really well together yeah okay um, so we will mix a highlight tone from the, bl the blue that we start with and it's
we have to be um, pretty light in the mix because um, here we still have the white shining through in some parts so the color is lighter than the color that we actually have on the palette. Uh, you have to keep that in mind when you mix color. So we just uh, start here and the important thing is that you also highlight the painted on cracks and not only the those are that are in the material so a well balanced choice of where you put the highlights uh, is quite important for this step here Also, what's, what's really key here is to don't mess up the direction of the shield because the highlight, of course, has to point upwards. Yeah. So this is. Um, not a very difficult step, but it's a, a little bit tedious because there's a gazillion little highlights to do. Yeah. All right, um, so we will also um, go a second time with the uh, with the wash over it. Mm -hmm. uh, once we're done all, with all the highlights, um, just to bind things together a little bit closer. Yeah. It's also going to mute the highlights just a tad. Yeah. Right now they are very strong. Well, it's important to mention because um, if your highlights weren't this strong and then you did another wash, they might completely lose them. So you want them maybe to, to be a little too strong. Yeah, also you need uh, a little room for variation. So this now, for example, here on the highlights that I pull over the whole thing here. Yeah, on the grain, yeah. On the grain. Those are not as bright as the one on the top, mm -hmm. but you can still see them. So uh, you'll be doing this for a while now. Yeah. At least the next five to sixty minutes. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think we can just uh, maybe do uh, the large part here. Yeah. Um, and then I continue just the very same way off camera. Mm -hmm. Mm, if you have more of the wood exposed, you actually would need to paint uh, also the highlight colors in the, in the brown to indicate wood grain. But as we have just only a very few larger ones, we can just skip that. like weathering and weathering effects just like to me it's about the, the best thing you can do with painting anything's rusty or like this wood here for example it's awesome yeah always uh, when I take a look at the uh, photos that I take uh, on trips it's always half of the pictures are like texture references and you're like oh I really rarely look at them again, but uh, somehow they're all in my mind. Yeah, well, that's enough. And you know where they are, so. I remember I was on a, on a trip to Vegas a couple of years ago, 2009, and went to the desert and uh, found, really in the desert, I found an old um, a deuce coupe, like a 1920, 1930 deuce coupe with bullet holes all over it. Uh, completely rusted 
And uh, at the end of the trip, I'd say about half of the pictures I've taken were of rust effects on that on that uh, car. Yeah, if you just take a close look to your environment, you will just see plenty of uh, nice rusted, nice weathered material. So, yeah. um, for example, our previous wet pellet, <laughs> who started rusting really bad, and we had to replace it. So, you know what to do with the big fat brush. <laughs> Wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you can see, um, I've continued the highlights uh, all the way through. Also added uh, very few lighter brown highlights on the edges here mm -hmm. um, to make it look a little bit more three D. That looks very pretty. It's nice. Yeah, I'm really happy with the results so far. Um, we also want to add a second layer of paint, uh, kind of as a really painted on freehand onto the blue. Um, we do set it to stick close to a certain reference for for a shield, uh, with two stripes here and there, here and there, um, and one in the middle. So. Um, I will do that now before I add a second thin layer of the wash, um, also to make it um, to make it uh, drawn a little together by the mm -hmm. wash. Um, I decided to do that with masking tape because um, yeah, we need to draw straight lines over quite a large area. Or so right, that is you've done this on the random strides and on the shoulder pad, for example. Yeah, just to give you some guidance there. Yeah. Um, sadly, we don't have um, any in uh, any tape in the in the right uh, width, so I just uh, simply cut out a smaller stripe out of uh, the tape. See, this is the tape we're using. It's a Tamiya masking tape. Yeah. Very nice because uh, usually the paint does not really stick on that, mm -hmm. so uh, we preserve the paint job. Um, if you're very very cautious, you can actually put it on your skin once and then pull it off. Yeah. Okay. Um, now make sure that's a 42 degrees angle. We have approximately 77 little bolts on the side. One is missing. You can do the math. <laughs> yeah, so that's about right. So that should be the. Uh, the width of uh, also the angle of our um, our black mark there, mm -hmm. and we will tape that uh, to the sides uh, with just one stripe in the original width. Um, yeah, we need, really need to be parallel. Okay, um, it will be a little tricky uh, over there, but we take care of that in just a second. And actually, I mean, I was I was actually serious about uh, getting the angles right. The um, you can use the little rivets on the side as guidance. If you just count them from the middle, <coughs> then you have the same the same distance and the same angle. Very nice. Okay, and I'll grab the same piece. Um, because I actually don't want to count the rivets, and with counting the rivets, uh, you have to be very sure that the uh, sculptor really did them in the same distance. Uh, which is that as a hand sculpt here, I would pretty much doubt that, although it's so close to perfect. But we will all uh, we will just um, take this point here as a point of orientation because we can see here we are. So that's not hand sculpted, huh? <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, I, I know, I I know that this is the middle angle. <laughs> I will count that. All right, so uh, it looks uh, good. Even though you did not count rivets. Yeah, hopefully uh, it works out because uh, those are not straight. I mean, uh, even in, uh, I think in the Viking era, they were not 100% perfect, but uh, we would still try to get them pretty straight. 
um, we will not go for a straight black, um, but for a uh, uh, little broken with uh, some, some dark sea blue in there. Would you also consider putting some red in the black? Almost like not noticeable to make it a little contrasty? Uh, yeah, it could, could work, work as well. Um, as I want to use the same black uh, for this ah. element here, uh, I'd rather go for something cool, mm -hmm. uh, also to contrast with the brown on the other side. Yeah. So when painting uh, the black, I said I wanted it to be um, uh, flicked off in some parts. Um, I also want to make sure not to hit the spots that I painted uh, the wood on. Mm -hmm. That was my initial question. Yeah, if you have a little, it, it overlapping a little, it's okay, but uh, not too much. One important thing is that you hit a lot of the uh, spots here to the side, actually, to have the line looking uh, somewhat continuous. Uh, otherwise, uh, it easily um, you're losing the uh, the, the straight line. Yeah. yeah. And we also analyze the shield, the shield a little more, um, not break the um, actually the material on the on the um, on the original shields from Vikings uh, on the sides could have also been leather, like it's bound with leather on the sides. Um, we've decided that this is metal uh, on both sides um, because also the middle part is, is um, seems to be metal for sure. Okay. Um, but we go for a little uh, unusual look for the metal, so we will uh, try to again because uh, on a lot of the reference pictures it looked actually like they were uh, covered with some kind of tar or yeah. something. So again with uh, some of that black paint. Um, we will do that by actually painting the um, the whole thing. Um, First, black, a little bit like a non-metal, so also with a strong contrast, so if it would have actually some gloss. Um, and then uh, do some scratches and uh, cuts with real metal paint. Mm. Okay, well, so we are leaving actually quite a few areas um, yeah. out right now. Um, yeah, I will still uh, do a bit more of the black. But yeah, we'll definitely leave some of that green shining through because mm -hmm. I really like the uh, that layered effect it gives you. So it's quite some depth. Well, depth and also a little bit of a story, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not a brand new, uh, straight out of a Viking factory kind of shield. Uh, it's been used before, or has been very poorly assembled to start off with. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we all uh, kind of know what you're doing here. Uh, yeah. We'll let you finish those stripes, and then uh, before we pull off the uh, the tape, uh, we'll come back. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right. So um, yeah, no big mystery here, but it will not be revealed. Mm-hmm. All right, that looks pretty good. Now the only thing missing is that middle line and that's already done. Yep. I'm really happy with the look because um, I think the, the interesting thing is here, we just achieve, achieved that look without actually um, using any special weather pa uh, paint or any special medium. It was just acrylic paints and... Uh, One layer black done. Or a little, little broken black. Yeah. All right, so... Uh, We'll do uh, the stripe in the same manner as we did before. Uh, I think we can do that as well off camera. Yeah, of course. And we'll be back with the stripe in place. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you've uh, not only done the middle stripe, but we have uh, we boldly went ahead and also did the uh, the frame. Yeah. Uh, also the base coat uh, on the middle part it was just the very same um, black blue that we. Uh, also on the freehand with, um, you can still up, uh, still see up there. It's still a little bit wet. Was it wet or was it is it white? Um, both. <laughs> Here it's still wet. 
uh, up here we still have some uh, minor spots of white um, because of the surface tension of the paint it's yeah. uh, sometimes especially hard around all those small rivets here and yeah again amazing cast uh, we don't have any uh, air bubbles in there uh, even in the small details like the rivets yeah yeah, I know they're doing a very, very uh, detailed quality control on all of the parts. I actually watched them do that uh, in one of the Skype calls we had. Awesome. Okay, so um, as I said, for um, the middle part and also for the frame, we will first uh, try something like a, a glossy paint look uh, or a thicker paint look um, with some texture and also some paint highlights and then do some metal shipping afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, we'll load the brush with uh, the base color and some white to the top and first try to draw a circular light up here. Move to the original color and stipulate a bit to the sides. It's not too bad if you create texture mm -hmm. um, because we want that to look really rough. And we will use the texture to really create a uh, nice texture blending. And by highlighting different parts of that later on, uh, we receive like a really nice deep look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very wet right now, yeah. so you can't really tell. Now that it's dry, you can see uh, we have here in the middle it's quite a bit brighter, and then without those textured gradients. Um, I will mix a light gray on the palette to uh, start and pick out some of the dents and scratches. some pure white. And with the wet brush, try to blend it a bit over the texture that you've just created. Funny, I know exactly what you're doing right now, but I, you know, like how and why you're doing these things, but I can't picture what the end result is going to be like. I'm actually quite interested. Not that I wasn't quite interested in all of the other parts, but. And again, as always, and then once again, picking that up, um, placed a little bit of white and then cleaned the brush and feathers it to the sides until he receives the desired effect. Okay, so I try to just uh, stipple in more, more and more uh, texture here to. Um, Really get a nice uh, circular light impression on that round object. Okay, I will also um, start highlighting the, these elements here on the sides just to see how, how far I have to, to go regarding the contrast. Let me just uh, ask you a question because I'm not entirely sure. <clears throat> now we said, okay, this is like a black paint um, kind of thing. And 
and you'll show some metallic um, ship arcs. Yeah. Well, this almost looks like non metallic metal to me. Am I, am I completely wrong? No, no, it? no, no. Um, it's quite close because it should be some, some kind of uh, a glossy paint on top of that. Ah, okay. So, so I'm a little actually, bit like yeah, yeah, it's a bit like non metal, but so I'm actually painting uh, gloss reflexes on the paint and also some, some damage and texture, and then uh, later on do some uh, ships. Mm, very clever. Yeah, I think um, we we discussed it uh, off cam uh, as well um, that it would have been also a possibility to actually do that with really uh, strong glossy paint. Mm -hmm. um, but we decided that the effect might have been if you want to to get something like a tar paint look or something like that. But we decided that it might actually turn out to be too destructive yeah. if we have all that in a very glossy color. Yeah, and the, the, the glossiness um, is glossiness is nice, but uh, of course it always will pick up the environmental light uh, more than what you've actually painted. And here you're now controlling exactly where you want the gloss effect to appear. Yeah. And no matter how you turn the miniature, it's going to stay there. Yeah, that's, that's true. Okay, yeah, I think um, I will continue like that also a bit off cam because uh, I want that to also look good here on the, on the lower side and yeah, also right white. Little, little untouched. Yeah, a little, yeah, yeah. A little too simple. Um, so I will also uh, highlight the rivets and around, along the edge here. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, after that, uh, I will. I think I will still add some uh, red glazes in the shadow. Ah, okay. But um, yeah, we will do that again on cam. Right. Later. Are you are you also going to put some of these effects on if this is a glossy paint uh, on the stripes themselves, or rather mm, not? maybe just a few highlights, um, like on areas here close to that, or maybe the the main scratches on the edge. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think I still want a contrast between the um, painted metal parts and the painted wood parts yeah. to, to have a different material in there. Okay, great. So we'll be back after you've done that. Okay, thanks. Fly your fiat like you. Fly your fiat like you. Fly your fiat like you. 